You know that cheap off-peak electricity you use that's saving you a fortune? Well, it might be part of a secret system that inflates the energy bills of almost every business in the UK, including all the EV public charger networks. I'm not talking about the wholesale price of energy, that's the one you see on the news. I'm talking about a parallel set of charges buried in the fine print that can make up well over half of their total bill. I'm going to show you the network rules and the murky demand charges that power companies use to make sure that your off-peak EV tariff is still making them an absolute fortune. You thought it was just the 20% VAT? No chance. It's far more devious than that. It's a complicated system, but by the end of this, you know exactly how it works. I'm Dave. I'm exposing the dirty secrets of our national grid and utility companies. Now everyone feels the pressure of rising energy costs. It's that one line on the budget you're always trying to shrink. You shop around, you negotiate a good rate per kilowatt hour, and you tell your kids to turn off the lights, but your bills stay stubbornly high. So why is that? But for businesses, including EV public charging networks, they're only fighting half the battle. Commercial electricity bills are effectively split into two parts. First, the commodity cost. This is the price of the actual electricity that they actually use. It's the part everyone focuses on, the headline rate that suppliers compete over. But the second part is where the real damage is done. These are the non-commodity costs. This is a bucket full of charges to cover grid infrastructure, balancing the system, and various government levies. And here's the kicker. For many businesses, these non-commodity costs can make up as much as 60% of their final bill. They're packed with charges that penalise businesses in ways most don't even see coming. So while one is busy negotiating a 5% saving on their commodity rate, these less visible non-commodity charges can quietly wipe out all of those savings and more, keeping the bills high even when wholesale prices are stable. This is the core of the problem. Too many businesses are focusing on the flashing lights of the unit price, while the real cost is being secretly added into the background. Well, this is where it gets complicated. Some might say intentionally so. The system is built on a series of charges that disproportionately affect businesses, and it all comes down to a simple concept. When you use your power. Now, for households, getting cheaper electricity at night on an EV tariff is a simple deal. You use power when demand is low, so in effect, you help the grid. You get a lower rate. But for a business, that logic gets twisted. Many businesses, factories, offices, shops, and even some public chargers operate mainly during the day, during peak hours. The grid then claims that it must at all times be ready for your highest possible usage at any moment. And it's that readiness that they're being charged a fortune for, even if they never actually use it. Now, this brings us to the energy company's biggest weapon, as demand charges. That's what happens to businesses like CPOs. Grid network operators monitor the electric, electricity usage. Then they take the single highest spike in their consumption during a set period, and they use that to then lock in a really high rate because of that brief demand. And that high rate can then extend for many months to come. Let's take two EV public charger networks. A has pretty constant demand, runs its charger steadily all day, uses a thousand kilowatt hours. B also uses the same thousand kilowatt hours, but it just happens that loads of people all stop here to charge on the way home from work at the same time, during peak time, but just for about an hour, creating a massive energy spike right in peak demand. So both use the same amount of electricity, but B's bills would be significantly higher. That one hour spike tells the network operator they need enough infrastructure, thicker cables, bigger substations, ready and waiting, just in case. They are paying for the network's readiness, not just their uh, supply. 
Judges have confusing official names, but the next two you need to know are DUOS and the TNUOS. DUOS stands for Distribution Use of System. These are charges from your regional grid operator for using the local poles and wires. Now, you would think this would be shared pretty equally. All businesses use them reasonably equally. The pole or pylons do not take a heavier load if you use more electricity. So while part of this is a standing charge, another part is based not on your actual demand, but on your peak demand punishing you again for those spikes, and rates vary massively by region. Then you have the TNU OS, Transmission Network Use of System. This pays for the national high voltage grid. For, for years, a huge part of this charge was determined by something called the triads, three half hour periods of highest electricity demand across the entire UK each winter. If the chargers happen to be working flat out during those specific moments, they'd pay that maximum peak rate all year. Well, thankfully, that system is now being slowly phased out, but its replacement is little better. It still penalises peak capacity. And those charges, of course, are going up uh, to pay for the grid upgrades needed for renewable energy. Figures from April 2026 show that the fixed cost element of the TNUS charges could rise by over 90% for many businesses. And this means businesses are footing the bill for a national infrastructure project through those opaque charges. Is this how Tesco's operates? They want to build a new store, so they put up the prices in all of their nearby stores to cover that cost. I don't think so. Instead, they just borrow the money to build a new store and they pay them the money back out of the profits that that new store will make. The National Grid has had this free ride for far too long. Now, on top of all this, new levies are constantly being added. A charge called the RAB levy is set to start appearing on bills from late 2025 to help fund new nuclear power projects. So everyone, even wind farms, are going to have to pay towards the new nuclear power stations. And that's on top of the very generous subsidy for each kilowatt of our electricity they will hopefully generate once they get running. And that's paid on top of another grant paid for generators who can provide steady levels of power, unlike wind. Another ELL support levy started in April 2025. While they may not pay it directly, it funds discounts for very large energy users and suppliers pass that cost on to other businesses. So, to recap, the bill is split with the biggest costs often buried in the non-commodity section. They're penalised not just for how much energy they use, but for when they use it and when they were monitored for using it. And these charges, known as DUOs and TNUOs, they're complex, vary by location, and they also are set to rise. Sounds good to me. Not. Well, understanding this system is the first step to fighting back. You can't control government policy, but you can manage your exposure to these charges. Here, Greg Jackson, CEO of Octopus Energy, is starting the fight back. He's become very vocal in recent months because as the national grid changes, so these discrepancies become more and more out of step with reality. It is the height of madness to have wind farms that are turned off because the national grid does not like the extra work involved in balancing the variable electricity source and then run gas turbines. Just crazy! Especially because the wind-generated electricity is among the cheapest in the world, while the gas turbines they turn on in their place are running on gas that varies wildly depending on who is, is fighting whom this week, or how badly the OPEC shakes need more money. To me it seems simple, that the price of the wind has not changed over the last year few million years, and it's unlikely to change over the next few years. A few million years. It's free! The way we generate, distribute and use electricity is changing dramatically, but far too many people are acting in the grid like the oil giants. Yeah, we just want to carry on exactly as we are. We've always done it, we've always made oodles of profit, and it costs us very little, and it costs us little effort. The way your business is charged for electricity is opaque and for many, deeply frustrating. It's a system that can punish you for simply operating during normal business hours. 
but it's not a trap without an escape. The secret is to stop focusing only on the price per kilowatt hour. The real savings are found by getting to grips with your non-commodity costs, by auditing your bill, profiling your energy demand, shifting your usage and investing in your own solutions. You can take back a significant amount of control. That is complex, but with the network changes and charges set to keep climbing, ignoring it is no longer an option. Your electricity bill isn't just a cost, it's a data point. Use it to understand the system, beat the power companies at their own game, and protect your bottom line. So whether you're a CPO, if you're on your own charges, or you're just a business user, you want to see exactly how much you could save by tackling these hidden charges, many consultancies offer a free bill analysis. It's the first step to uncovering what you're really paying for. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Dave.